Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm just gonna be chatting with you about my personal experience uh, going out and playing shows in and around Knoxville, Tennessee as a solo acoustic musician, right? So if you're at home and if you are aspiring to go out and start performing or maybe you're thinking about starting a business side hustle or playing gigs nights and weekends, maybe in you know private events or what have you, I'm gonna kind of talk you through that share with you my experience about uh, going out and doing this so far. Because I've been um, back in Knoxville, Tennessee after living away for years and years and years. Moved back last summer and I've been playing shows for the, about the past two months now. And I'm gonna subdivide this into three categories here. And also guys, I'm gonna share with you at the end, uh, and I'm not just saying this because of the video, but it is wait till the video end worthy because I just got an important email from a company that I'll be working with, um, and this is a huge win, not just for my content, but like life in general. Um, and it kind of shows you where the hard work goes and pays off. I'll share this with you at the end, but it's directly connected to what I'll be talking about today. Um, but the three categories are, first, my experience getting booked. Like how am I going out and playing, uh, actually like finding the shows to play and getting paid to do them. Um, the next one I'll talk about are just the different crowds and the experiences playing in the shows themselves or playing the shows themselves. I think that's like so intriguing to me and I'll get into that in a second. And then the last, and this is kind of what I'm talking about when it comes to the email that I just got, um, about the sort of the approach that I'm taking um, online and offline to try to make this, you know, playing music, doing what I enjoy doing, to really be income that I can, you know, use and not just be like a side hustle and how I'm sort of connecting the dots with that. So if any of this interests you, stay on the video and uh, let's get going. So getting booked, okay. So this is not easy. Um, before I started going out and trying this, I was you know, messaging music friends, talking to different folks about their experience doing it. And there was a couple things that it came down to and it's just consistency, like being very persistent, like you are offering a service, right? So it, like there's a big element of sales that goes into cold calling places or trying to reach out or what have you uh, to get the shows booked, okay? So the first thing that I did, and this is how I initially got my foot in the door, is to just go out and play open mic night. So that shows the venue that you're talented. Uh, for me, like I didn't have a lot going on in Knoxville. Ironically, I'm from here but I have not played a whole lot of music here. Most of my performances had either been um, in Johnson City, Tennessee, where I kind of went to school and played a lot of tunes up in the Tri-Cities on drums and different bands and things like that. And then overseas, um, I played as a solo acoustic act and also as a duo. Uh, John Marr, if you were watching, shout out to you as always. Uh, like an Irish-American duo overseas, right? So I didn't really have a good contextual starting point for how this market worked in Knoxville. And it's very interesting because we are culturally rich in our musical heritage. I'm from Tennessee, like this is, you know, the bread and butter of where a lot of music has been made, like a, a big chunk of Americana comes from this general region. Um, and we have like bluegrass in the east, you know, the blues in the west, Memphis. Um, Nashville, of course, is known for country music, but Knoxville sort of has this, you know, it's in this kind of musical sphere, but I think that a lot of musicians that I'm friends with um, historically have just kind of seen Knoxville as being like a um, sort of a more difficult place to get your foot in the door. And I've read on different Reddit forums and things like this and that, that touring bands will often skip Knoxville for different reasons, but mainly because you're in between Asheville and Nashville which are huge music markets and, um, you know, that's just kind of how it goes, I guess. I guess there's a distance and proximity element that's taken into consideration, but anyway, I'm getting off track. But the question becomes, like, how do you, you know, get yourself integrated into the space, right? And so the open mic was the first way of doing it, um, and I've kind of just been connecting the dots after that. So once you've got sort of the reference, if you will, and you can go around to different places and be like, hey, I play here, I play there. That's sort of been working as well. Um, but really, it's, just, it's been a lot of just emailing, right? So what I'm finding, and 
you know, I also went around and just handed out flyers um, to a couple different places, a couple different styles of flower flyers rather, with like different messaging on them. Um, I do marketing for a living, so I feel like I've got a good handle on the graphic design and making things look nice. And um, but I have not gotten any leads back from physically going and like handing flyers out to businesses in the middle of the day because I assume that's where like the least busy time of day is rather and I'm able to talk to somebody. So what I've learned from this is that you have to find the person that actually books the show, okay? So imagine me walking into the restaurant, I did this last week, it's been a couple days actually doing this, and you hand over the piece of paper, the information, and you've got the whole spiel, but if you're talking to like a server or a hostess or you know if for, like for senior living it's another option um, if you're not talking to the activities director yet probably ain't getting booked it's that person's job to actually make that decision and when the communication is there's an extra step out of the communication I'm learning that it's not working so the the best approach is to just find the person responsible for making the bookings don't rely on a hot lead if you're trying to book shows and you're just like oh pass this information along I'm learning that that's like doesn't work it's just you're not it's not working for me at least um, so the other element that I'll talk about is that these social channels that I have obviously get a decent amount of reach and so I have been successful with just reaching out to businesses through their Instagram and being booked that way which is great from a content creation standpoint um, because the numbers do matter I'm just gonna be honest there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes to create this content and um, you know if, if it's easier to book gigs because people see what I'm doing online I'm all about that um, but it hasn't been consistent like I think where it's worked is like I just said I message the business and it just so happens to be the person that's in charge of the booking on the other side I would say that I've sent hundreds of messages on Instagram and the conversion rate or even the response rate is like zil. Like it's it's nothing. It's maybe 5%. Like it's really, really low. Maybe not hundreds of messages, but about 100 I'd say. Um, so that's just kind of how it is. Keep following up, but you have to find the person that actually does the booking and that seems to be working and then it's just a matter of networking getting yourself out there and for me just important to let business owners around Knoxville know that this is a business relationship and um, it's not just me being like hey like I'm you know I want to come show my shit off and like play a gig that ain't working like I'm approaching them being like hey like you know I understand where this element plays in your business why you're investing in me or other people to, to do this and um, just communicating that way. That's what I've been trying at least. It probably could be better. Anyway, moving on to the second bit, and I'm gonna chat about this for a while, is my experience actually going out, playing the shows and the audience reactions and things like that. Because when you're doing this, like you're at work, it's different than a nine to five job, obviously, and it's something I enjoy doing. Uh, but you're, or I'm learning the subtleties of how this all works, all right? So, before I started booking, I said I went out and I reached out to some friends um, that have done this. And what I what struck me as interesting um, is that one, uh, like there's a couple, there's a duo. Uh, Ryan, if you're watching, this is uh, what you said. But you told me that basically the further you get away from Knoxville, Tennessee, the more fun and like better the shows kind of go. Uh, maybe that's not your exact words, but something along those lines. And I am finding that to be exactly the case. Case in point, last weekend, all right? So if you're at Hops and Hounds, I know some people watch uh, that come to some of my shows. Um, I'm gonna talk about this for a second. Friday night, last week, I played right outside downtown Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll call it downtown. Um, at a brewery type area or type place, won't name the name. But um, a decent flow of people in throughout the night. I'm on the patio. People are drinking. People are um, eating. It's not a formal setting. It's, you know, your basic sort of 
brewery with food for for the most part. Um, played three hours, and I think minus my friends who showed up, um, there was maybe one other gentleman that even gave as much as a golf tap that night. And we're talking, you know, tables filled of about, I'd say, 20 to 30 people at any given time being turned over all night long. And as a musician, you're up there sort of like wondering, like, wait, what am I doing wrong? Is this just a tough crowd? Is it the atmosphere? I think that has something to do with it for sure. Um, or like, what is this really? You know, like I play shows, I think the talent's there, and I feel like I do a good job, and then you're kind of getting crickets on the end. Um, and I thought that was very strange. Sold about three t-shirts, tips were minimal. Um, tipping has some, been something that I didn't get playing shows in Vietnam overseas, and I didn't really account for the money that I'd be getting through tips, playing performances. And it's good, like it's a substantial amount nearly every show, except this show at this specific place. And so, you know, could have just been the time of day, I don't know, it was perfect weather outside, but um, all in all, a strange experience, Friday night, and when you go and do that for three hours and you walk away, like I know that I'm just functioning as background music, that's what I want, but um, you compare and contrast different performances in different places, right? So the next night, uh, I'm in a city called Oak Ridge, Tennessee, at a uh, basically a place that serves beer that functions as both a, um, a dog park. It's called Hops and Hounds. Seriously, check it out. Uh, amazingly nice owners and great atmosphere. But let's just say that I had, I would put it at about an eighth of the crowd from the night before, right? Way more people on Friday night than there was at this, um, at this place on Saturday night. And I am far, far away, further away rather, uh, from downtown Knoxville, not too far away. Uh, but not like out in the boonies by any means. You know, I'm in East Tennessee, so maybe it might be all boonies for some people. Uh, but anyway, it was just an amazing show. And that was my experience the last time I played there. And I find this very peculiar because the reactions are so different, right? So at this place, I'm actually kind of playing to a crowd of nobody, but there's several different areas of the venue that people can hang out and they've got, you know, some are in the, more in the shade, some are like, um, I don't know, it's just kind of set up differently. But what I noticed right away was even though like there's like two people that are in front of me, other people are hearing the music that I can't see and the reactions from the crowds are like, I'm not kidding, like 5,000 times more than the restaurant setting the night before. Does the atmosphere have something to do with it? Yeah, I do believe so. Um, but further from that, just like the encouragement from not only the staff and, um, but just everybody that came by, it's just so much different, so different, right? And, um, you know, that night, let's say I got paid, I would say quite a bit lower of a base pay, like by $50 less, I'll say base pay. But, um, and this is kind of segueing into the next part. Uh, from a business perspective, it made more sense to me to, to go and do that because I played less time, made about 40% more money, and sold like seven t-shirts, which I profit from on each of them. And um, it was just overall a much better experience. I was home earlier, and that's interesting to me. That's important to note. If you are sitting at home and you're trying to figure it out, you're probably going to have different nights where it goes better for no reason whatsoever. Um, let me know in the comments what you might think. Is it like a city person, sort of like, I'm here to eat and I'm not here to listen to music? I don't know. It's just, it, it intrigues me. It's kind of why I made this video, what prompted this. But, um, but overall, like I said, it was less work the second night last weekend, substantially, 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 um, more money, friendlier folks, like um, when the gentleman comes up to me, he's like, I watch the channel, it's getting me motivated to play music, and I'm like, that's exactly why I'm doing this, and that's great, and um, yeah, radically different experiences. So, that being said, I'll go to the next part here. What about the future endeavors and sort of the news that I was sharing, or I mentioned at the beginning of this, um, of, of this video, but here's what I'm learning about all this, is A, there is money, B, musicians, me, and a lot of my friends and stuff, I would say that we all fit into this. 
we are atrociously bad at business. So let me kind of set you up with um, what I think about here. So you hire a plumber when you clog the shitter, all right? You're probably going to get, in a lot of cases, a good old boy, maybe from a Facebook group, that's going to come over with a $5 Timu snake, and they may or may not unclog your toilet, and then they're going to charge you $150 an hour regardless of it. And then I can go with my own PA system, decades worth of practice, can hold my own on several different instruments, uh, go up, sing and play in the heat for you know three hours, and I'm getting the same pays Billy Bob that um, that's coming with his crack hanging out and he's not clearing out your, your toilet. That bothers me a lot as a performer that has or trying to have a business mindset behind this. And so that being said, what do you do? As a musician, how do you make more money and how can you connect maybe online and offline um, content, online, offline content, um, or at least how am I doing it? That's kind of what I'm getting to. All right, so first, I'm not putting a lot of this into action so far. I'm trying my best to, but when I research you know, ways to make more money, a couple of themes always stick out, and it is to actually skip the restaurant and bar scene altogether. If you're in Knoxville, Tennessee, and you're a business owner, watch this, pay attention, because I would love to change this culture. Because, like for the reasons I just mentioned, you don't get paid what you're worth. And what I'm finding is that the business owners, they must all, I mean, they obviously don't talk to each other, maybe they do, but it's not hard to figure out information. And there's a standard of about $150 for what, three hours of music. Um, for me, you know, with tips and t-shirt sales, I can make it work, but for like a duo or a band, that ain't much money. And it doesn't scale appropriately as you introduce more band members in most cases. This is my experience so far with businesses. Um, but every bit of it that I research online are like the, the, the bar and restaurant scenes, like they're just not, they're, they pay, but you're gonna work a lot harder and I'm all about working smarter and not harder. So how do you do this, all right? So the one way that I'm trying to, and I have friends around the city and the region that um, we're trying to do this with, that musicians that know we're worth more and want to create more income, is to just go around and like the private events are where the money is at. That's basically what it comes down to. You're talking weddings, retirement uh, parties, hotels even, which kind of skirts the bar restaurant scenes, but it's, but it's different. Um, corporate events, retirement events, graduation parties. Um, that's where you're going to be able to like really increase your price because these places generally have budgets that are higher and because of online work, because I work remotely, you can cast a wider net. You might have to travel, but when you're getting potentially paid, you know, five times more to play at the private gig, um, it makes sense to go do that. And so this is all different because like I said, remote work makes it possible for me personally to go and chase the gig in Charlotte or Atlanta, because honestly, uh, I'm using gas and a hotel room if I need it. And so that's one way to so just cast a wider net. I'm learning that that's um, how a lot of the event um, entertainment agencies around here work and function is that it's a wider net. And that's a okay with me because if you're, you know, if you have a service like I do, if you're trying to, you know, really make it work, you kind of have to get your name out there by, you know, throwing yourself out there. Now to the part, the online part of it all because this is a, an important element of how I'm trying to make all of this work. Um, it's helping me book shows, it's helping me book like um, lessons. And what's interesting is that all of this is sort of working the way that I've wanted it to work. So, but but a drum roll here. Who reached out to me in the email that I mentioned at the beginning of the video and what is a big win is uh, Sweetwater Music. Sweetwater, if you're watching, thank you so much. I'll be um, putting affiliate links to their to the merchandise that I use from them. But basically what I'm getting to is you have to be proactive in making this a business, right? Um, when I first started making content, it was to create a personal brand sort of, knowing, having worked in marketing, that 
The online presence is so, so important to creating income, getting your service known, your name out there, that for me, like the longevity of it was to just like, all right, post, start posting. Um, if people catch on, they catch on. If it takes me a year to get something going to where I feel proud of it, maybe make some money off of it, great. If it takes five years, then I think of it like an asset, if I can grow subscriber bases and everything. But as I've done this, that's the reality that's unfolded. I'm happy to see a lot of it coming together, getting cool like affiliate sponsors and things like that. Um, but yeah, that is kind of how I'm approaching this. It's to find higher paying gigs in person, making sure that I'm using the technology to, um, to put the content online and reaching out to the appropriate channels to, to make it work because you're, you're probably not going to be sitting there making content and like people reaching out to you. That hasn't really happened to me so far. Um, it, it's happened, but it hasn't ended with like monetary gain where I've made money so far off the channels and things is, um, I haven't made much. I've sold some t-shirts. There's some affiliate stuff working, but, um, but really it's all, I'm sort of piecing all the pieces together, but it is working, right? And um, God, I probably rambled on there. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. If you are interested in what I do, uh, sign up for a newsletter. I'm going to send you updates, free tabs. This is all loosely sort of based around bluegrass instruction, but it's important for my content to, uh, to be enjoyable by me. And I don't always like sitting down and working through an intricate tab or, um, or what have you. So just, you know, Stay tuned for updates that way. I'm also working on a beginner guitar course. Had that uh, requested a lot in my comment section on Instagram. By the way, check out Instagram if you haven't. Grab a t-shirt. 5% of everything that I do on this channel is going to go towards charity. And I am very, very obsessed with the idea of leaving my legacy here on earth um, musically to be proactive in trying to preserve the music that that has kept me um, disciplined, like has given me something to do rather than just stare at my phone all night. And so uh, that's an important element. 5% of everything is gonna go to a charity, this year at least, that teaches uh, bluegrass music to youngsters. We'll see where this goes in the future. I would love to be more proactive and um, sort of giving back to the community, but 5% is just gonna be donated to that charity. They're gonna teach bluegrass music to folks around the South. And that way we're spreading the bluegrass music we're keeping folks playing the tunes, learning the music, and uh, keeping the ecosystem going. So guys, thank you so much. Adios.